we are going to talk about the season finale of BGC 16. Um, 10 episodes like the past few seasons. It seems really, really short. And this one is called hashtag Shabai. <laughs> okay, so the finale starts with Nisha going to a hotel and she's going to get away from Candace. And I'm like, this was very weird because it was like a, it was like a crease on the side. It was in the middle of the day. Like usually they go to hotels at like late at night and uh, it's like bright daylight. She's like going to the hotel for breakfast, which is extremely odd, but I mean, they keep arguing and it doesn't seem like anything is getting resolved at this point. Candace is then saying that she's really laughing because her switch is off. She doesn't really care. She's not interested in Nisha. Y'all hear Kiko whining. Uh, since Nisha's mom decided to jump in the argument, which we can clearly see that Candy still does care and clearly it's bothering her because otherwise she wouldn't be like putting so much attention into it. Unless she's acting up for the cameras and wants more camera time, I don't really know, but she really does seem bothered. So we finally get to know Stephanie a little bit more on this finale and, she, you know, we they show her... Like little comedy skits saying that she likes comedy, she likes modeling, she likes doing skits and stuff like that. So, finally get to know at least something about Stephanie before the season's over. The girls go to a gay club that night and the next day Alex Hooper, who is a comedian actor, comes in and he's explaining how comedy is hard. And it really is. And people would think that like in movies and stuff, and since I've been going to acting classes, you would think that crying and stuff in movies and stuff would be the hardest when it really isn't. It's actually comedy. And the reason being is because the timing has to be right. There's like a lot of back and forth talking and you have to like pause for when an audience is supposed to laugh. You have to what is it called? Like when it's a punchline, you have to make sure that the other person pauses for a split second for the audience once again to laugh at your joke before they continue talking. So comedy is really all about timing and it's actually one of the hardest things to do when it comes to acting. They then find out that, so then Alex brings all the girls in and they find out tomorrow that they are going to do a roast. Nisha then comes home and she tells Cabrina that she's giving Candy her space. So we see Cabrina and Candy have not, sorry, Cabrina and Nisha having a talk. And what it looks like, because we see the subtitles and we see the girls in the other room at the computer, it seems like the girls being Candy and the other girls are overhearing the conversation that Nisha and Candy, Nisha, damn it, <laughs> that Nisha and Cabrina are having. Candy then starts to get all worked up, and so I'm thinking maybe she is just a little bit extra. She just wants some drama, and you're on Bad Girls Club. There needs to be drama, so somebody has to be starting something. I'm sure that she may have had someone in her ear saying, start something, start something, because otherwise the season would be boring, and there really wasn't many physical altercations in this season, I don't feel like. I feel like there wasn't really that many fights whatsoever. So... Candy decides to go into the living room and she's pissed and she confronts Nisha and she says, next time your mama threatens me, I'm going to kick your ass. So next thing you know, once again, it is a full blown argument between Nisha and Candy. Nisha says she doesn't really care and she's not going to keep doing this. And at the moment she's being strong and not feeding into the drama, but that does not last long because Candy then says, come around here and do something. Nisha quickly walks around the corner and Candy pulls off her jacket and out of nowhere she swings and hit Nisha dead in the face. Um, yeah, if that was like a real fight without security watching and stuff, Candy's a pretty big girl and she was like swinging. I'm pretty sure that Candy would have whooped Nisha's ass. And that would have been a good fight though because it seems like both of them would have been like throwing punches and not ripping out hair like most bad girls like to do. Security then manhandles Nisha. Nisha's getting thrown around by security. And Candy then says, oh, so then when they kind of calm down, Nisha's like kind of not feeding into it. She's laughing. And then Candy does a low blow. She says, your daughter's still ugly. And then Nisha pretty much loses it. Should I be pissed too? Like, 
Y'all say something about Kiko. Oh, there's going to be a problem. Like, you ain't about to talk to my son like that. So the security then calms Nisha down once again outside the house. She's like, get the camera out of my face. Um, you should keep someone get the camera out of the face. And I'm thinking, like, you on a reality show, the camera's supposed to be in your face. And especially at times like this, because this is the more interesting times that we want to watch. So the camera can't just get out of your face. But they did. They backed up because then we see a very far away shot of the security talking to Nisha. The security then says, I have a daughter too. Like, I understand. Don't lose yourself because clearly she was losing herself. Next, Nisha says that she's going to a hotel and that she's going to go home tomorrow. So she then starts packing her bags to leave. Tierra tells Nisha at the end of the day, I think there was five this episode, that she likes her. And then Candy then kicks Nisha's bag over at the front door and says, well, go home and babysit your gorilla children. So once again, she's still like making <laughs> like jabs at Nisha about her children because she realized that this is what it is. Candy is upset that Nisha doesn't care. People that get angry really get upset when you don't care. If you're just like, okay, cool with it. But she realized that talking about her child or children is what pushed her over edge. So there's nothing really anything Nisha could say or that Candy thought she could say at this point. So of course she brings up the children again, go babysit your gorilla children because she knows that that is a like soft spot for Nisha. So once again, she's criticizing the children, which I do not agree with. And then, what? Oh my God, it's so quick. Like, Z is the last original standing. Like, I thought Z was going to leave, like, episode two or three. Like, she really seemed like she was going to leave at the beginning of the season. I don't know why Kiko was so whiny. Uh, we went outside. I took him for a W-A-L-K, and it was raining. And you can't say that in front of him because he'll get excited and he'll start crying. You can't see that. You can't say B-O-N-E. One day he's going to learn how to spell, and he's going to know what that means. I'll have to, like, come up with another code word. Okay, so after that fight... And I noticed some comments about this, but I was already thinking this. Like, Candy probably would have been sent home if Nisha would have kept trying to fight Candy. Candy definitely would have been the one sent to a hotel. So I kind of wish Nisha would have stayed, but Candy ain't going to play that. Because, for one, Candy was antagonizing Nisha, and she threw the first punch. So if there would have been another fight... I'm pretty sure Candy would have been sent to the hotel and Candy would have been sent home. But Nisha didn't even let that be an option. She was just like, I'm ready to go. Nisha then says she wants to be remembered as the re remembered as being real and she's shugged. So shabai, as the hashtag says, Nisha is gone. Candy says to Nisha as her like farewell goodbye, like nice making out with you and nice beating your ass. Candy crazy. Okay, so then Z, and this is really weird. Z starts, then starts expressing herself about Nisha. She hung up this big diss letter, which it seems like all the girls kind of um, participated in, like writing this big ass letter on this board. And I think that was kind of odd because Z was like cool with Nisha towards the end. I mean, she didn't like her. She clearly said, you know, I can give you props about your rapping because you are a good rapper, but I don't necessarily like you, but let's just put our differences aside. So I found it kind of interesting that Z started talking about Nisha when she left. I really didn't like that. So we then see the girls sitting around the living room and they're they're uh, writing their roast. Tierra then says that she likes the vibe in the house and she doesn't want to ruffle any feathers. So she doesn't want to write anything like mean in the roast, like really make fun of somebody. The next day, Steph is so excited to go to Pigs and Whistles, which is where they are doing the roast. Z says she's nervous because her writing sucks. And when they get to the venue, we see all the chairs with the other girls' names on it, all the originals. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to come back. Like, that would have been really good. They were going to come back. But Oxygen played us because they didn't come back. They had these stupid people behind these big-headed cardboard things with all the girls having stupid-looking facial expressions and they put them on the chair so that was them being there what would have been good is they should have had the girls also roast the originals that way it would have caused more drama at the reunion but of course when they go to the reunion they wouldn't have seen it they wouldn't be seeing what said unless they played it in like the little mini tv screen at the reunion or if why does this feel like it's like lagging i don't know i put this on quick time today because i usually use uh photo booth and everybody's like ah your camera sucks like hello it's a macbook and no i'm not so like record on the camera connect it to the macbook upload it i don't got time for all that this takes long enough as is so no 
I'm not doing, but I did, I did change the program because I use QuickTime to record um, my little sitcom pilot. So I would have roasted the originals and then played it at the reunion. That would have been really funny. Okay, so they get to the venue, da da da, fake former castmates with big ass heads. The roast up, the roast ends up being up, being fun with jokes, and there was no audience. I thought they were going to be in front of ants. Um, so it was really just a quick little fun activity for the girls standing. Okay, so in standing, what what I mean by that is the girls last standing in the damn house. So the funny, I thought this joke was really funny. They say so one of the girls, Big Ange's body double, and I never watched Mob Wives, even though I like a lot of reality shows. But I did watch Celebrity Big Brother, which is in London, and it's like on YouTube. I uh, I used to have it on my Snapchat. That I love that show. I'm addicted to. It. I watch every damn episode. So, what was my favorite last season at third place? And of course, Renee. And I don't know, but the British people used to call her Rennie. So I don't know if her name is Renee or Rennie. I think it's Renee. But she was my favorite mob wife, and it kind of made me want it to watch mob wives. But I still haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so the girls go to brunch, and the lady brings pink balloons over and the girls get excited and one says pop me on it <laughs> candy then like aggressively stabbing the balloon like with a butter knife or something like really trying to pop it and the girls start jumping in excitement and because they think that they're going somewhere when in reality it's you are going dot 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 home <laughs> like you have been punked like the pink balloons don't mean shit uh by the way, if you didn't see, I posted last week on Instagram, Natalie is having a girl, and Natalie and Jacob posted this little revealing thing where they popped the balloon. I think pink balloons came out because they're having a girl. So I've known for a really long time, I just wasn't allowed to tell you guys, and I was like, Natalie, if you don't quit putting this stupid workout shit all over your Snapchat, and tell everybody that you're pregnant, like, you're getting on my nerves, just tell people you're pregnant and do your normal Snapchats. Like, she kept doing Snapchats from, like, here up, even in Halloween, and I'm like, I know your stomach's big. <laughs> like, I kept seeing it, like, on FaceTime. I'm like, I should really, like, screenshot this and post this and, like, tell on her. But no, I wouldn't do that. Y'all know I'm loyal. I would never do something like that. That's so scandalous. Okay, so Candy is talking shit. Like, y'all bitches thought we was going somewhere. Y'all going home. And the girls then pack. They go to Cosmos for the last night where they first went out. And they all have fun. They're drunk. And they're sad they're going home. Candy then says, when I get home, this was funny. She says, we have to eat everything. Uh, everything in this house we have to pig out. Everything has to go. And uh, she's like pouring chips and stuff. I don't, that was like really, really funny. And then she's talking about she's got to eat everything before they leave. And she's like pouring out the dish soap. It really bothered me that like she was pouring chips in like the stove range because like my dad just cleaned my stove last week. He took it apart in a million pieces if you watch my Snapchat and like wanted to take the pieces home. And then I was like, you better know how to put this back together. But my stove looks brand new. So when she was like putting the chips in the stove range, I was like cringing. Like, you know how much work that is to clean up? But uh, yo, that was really, really funny. Even though I wouldn't say candy's not my favorite per like, I don't think I would necessarily be close friends with Candy in real life because of how she acts. I do feel like she's a little bit extra and tends to go overboard with stuff. And she's a little bit too, like, uh, like pushy. But as far as TV is concerned, as entertainment value, I would say she's one of my favorites to watch. Because she is funny. She does cause drama. She did stir up the house and stuff like that. But, uh... As far as being her friend, I don't know about that. She might be cool in real life, but that was funny. So then Candy, okay, so she trashes the kitchen, and Tierra says, hopefully we made an epic season because we were lit. Uh, I mean, it was a pretty good season. I think I like this season. I don't think it's one of the best for sure. I don't think it was epic. Um, Tierra is not going to get remembered. They only showed, like, two things of her. Like, her first episode, she got a lot of airtime because the girls were talking crap and, like, messing with her, but... We really don't know anything about Tierra except that she's got like 18 businesses and whatever else. Like, uh, they didn't show really much of anything of her, so I'm pretty sure she is not happy with her camera time. So the girls get ready to go home and says that they're going to be in the airport with full makeup looking crazy. And I'm like, y'all ain't even going home yet. Like, y'all going to the hotel. So what was the point of lying and saying you're going to be at the airport with the full makeup on? Like, you're not even going home yet, so whatever. Tierra is first to go home. She thought she'd be second. I knew Tierra would be first because 
she really didn't do too, too much. I mean, I mean, Cabrina could have been first. I think they were both pretty much tied. We didn't get to know much about Cabrina except the fact that she cooks. Uh, Stephanie says that she's not leaving. Oh, so Stephanie's trying to leave. And, you know, that shit was so funny because she said, I'm not leaving. She's, like, trying to hold on to you. Now. I'm not leaving. And then she's crying out the window saying, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. That was, that had me cracking up. That was really, really funny she did that. And I, I would have been on season 13 like, I'm so ready to go home. Take me home. I got to get out of here. I was the exact opposite. I got to get the fuck on. I got to go home. Candy and then Z do their last confessional. And Z does a let's be honest thing with her tongue. And she doesn't know how to like do her tongue the right way. So it was extremely. She said, let's be honest. She goes, she goes like, uh, are you moving her tongue awkwardly side to side? I think she was trying to like do a. Like a fast tongue thing, and it was like really awkward. I'm like, no, Z, yeah. Let's not be honest, or yeah, let's be honest and say, what are you doing with your tongue? Because that shit looked really weird. Candy then leaves, and I said, oh, I even wrote it here. I said, she's not my favorite, but she's definitely the strongest personality wise. And now I kind of take that back because as far as drama and whatever, she's not my favorite in the sense of I love her personality. But she is one of my favorites in the sense of she did bring a lot of entertainment value on the show. And I'm surprised she wasn't original. She would have been a good original for the show. She would have made it to the end. And she, she's definitely the strongest personality-wise, not intimidated by anyone. She says she doesn't regret anything. And I think she really should regret uh, saying all that mean stuff to Z about her children. Like, that wasn't nice at all. I don't agree with talking about someone else's children because like Nisha says they can't defend themselves. Plus I mean they're probably too young to watch this. I hope they're not allowed to watch it but like that like really bothers people and creates insecurities. So say if for instance if they don't watch it, if their friends watch it they're going to say oh by the way they were showing your picture on Bad Girls Club because your mom was on there and the girl Candy said how ugly were y'all were and y'all are ugly. You know what I mean? Like you don't even want to like set anybody up for that. So I think that was completely wrong and I disagree with it because you shouldn't say anybody's children's ugly. Like just keep some things to yourself whether you believe it or not because that can create insecurities that last a lifetime. So no. And now that the season is over and there are so many damn replacements and Z is the only original, I think the season theme should be tatted up, twerking, replacements. That's the theme of the season, not social disruption. Uh, we see previews to the reunion and Erica Mena is the co-host. I know you guys were talking about it a couple weeks ago that Erica Mena was going to be hosting it, which of course Tanisha is still there and Erica Mena is co-hosting. We see Nisha was wearing like this little short blonde wig thing and I wasn't really feeling it. I like her braids way better. I don't know where that blonde wig came from. It doesn't really match her face. Tanisha says, Tanisha goes crazy at this room. She says, Tanisha, she says, get off my stage. Get, get off, get off, bitch. Yeah. Get off my stage. Get off, bitch. She's like going off on somebody. I don't know who. Maybe it's uh, Ryan slash Adrian because you guys did mention that. Adrian tries to fight Tanisha, so I'm guessing that it would be her. So down to your Instagram questions. I was doing that so it doesn't time out. You know, I just need to set my timeout timer to like 25 minutes because my videos are never over 25 minutes. It times out at 20. So, Akamacho, A-C-C-A-M-A-C-H-O says, Do you think that what Candy said about Nisha's kids will affect her in the real world? Uh, I would say so. I feel like she should have some sort of repercussions for what she said because that's not nice but you do ugly things to people ugly things happen to you so you may have children and your children may not be the prettiest children because you're saying bad things about someone else's children like karma's a bitch and good luck if you have children with you saying hateful comments like that also asked do you think z was being fake for talking hella shit and a lot of you seem to think this i was thinking it so I'm glad you guys asked this. Staying underscore in underscore Wonderland said the same thing. And Casca, Casca Precious said the same thing. Asked about Z talking shit. And also mentioned that Z was one of their faves. And, it you know, that was a disappointment. I agree. It was completely unnecessary. I think it took a lot of points, like her cool points away. Because it's like, 
you stayed new, not neutral. Like you were staying respectful and I don't know. You just don't talk about people when they walk away. Like if you want to say something, like say it to their face or don't say anything at all. If you don't want to, yeah, exactly, exactly what I just said. If you don't want to say it to their face, don't say anything at all. And if you're going to talk shit behind someone's back, like say it to their face. So why are you going to sit there and talk crap as soon as she walks out the door, but you were cool with her the past like week or two in like on the show? Like I really didn't like that. I think that is, I don't know if that's being fake. Yeah, that's being fake. That is being fake. You guys are right. I don't know why I just had like a whole debate with myself just now. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't respect Z for doing that. And you guys know that I really like Z. Um, but no, I was disappointed too. Definitely not. Next, King underscore Allen says, who do you think will be ex? Oh, who do you think would be your ex best friend on the new show that Judy is on? Would it be Rocky or Mimi? And it would definitely be Rocky. Me and Rocky had a lot of history because we were really close on All Star Battle 2. And then, of course, we had to do a whole season where we weren't friends. Uh, I think we would have worked well together. We would have, we definitely would have bonded because we always, like, we really liked each other when we were friends on Battle. And, of course, the whole being sent home and her you know, talking to everybody else but me and being mad at me, but not Tiana for sending her home. Like, hello, it's a game. Like, I just met you on this show, and I never said I was saving you. But I feel like we definitely had the history, so we... And I'm really surprised that they didn't ask me and Rocky to do the show. I was really shocked about that because we did have, like, a big, like, friendship slash rivalry later. Uh, and it would have been pretty cool to do it because she looks completely different now. You know, she was really cute and, uh, fun on, uh, her season, season 10 Atlanta. And then when she went on to battle, she had kind of switched to the more tomboyish look. And then season 13, she was really tomboyish. So it would have been kind of cool if we were able to do the show together I think we would have became friends again instantly. Like, put our differences aside, we probably would have became friends again. And it would have been kind of cool to see her the way she is now because she looks like a completely different person. Like, she's really girly, long blonde hair. She has, like, big titties and a big butt and stuff like that. So, it definitely would have been uh, pretty cool. And, yeah, she looks like a different person. Like, somebody, I think BGCT posted something the other day and I looked, I'm like, oh my god, that's Rocky? Like, she looks completely different. She looks really good. And it was, I said, a picture of Julie too. And now she's got blonde hair and she's like lost weight and taking like pictures of her ass. And I'm like, oh my God, all these girls are trying to turn into me. They're like all growing out their hair, dying it blonde and like getting in shape and trying to post ass pictures on Instagram. <laughs> like, yeah, that's interesting. So, okay, baby, I'm almost done. Elmer dot S16 says, do you think Candace meant what she said about Nisha's daughters or to piss or said it to piss Nisha off? And I think she said it to piss, piss Nisha off. Maybe she halfway thought it in the first place and was like, oh, that's a good like low blow. So she definitely said it the second time because she realized that that's what got under Nisha's skin. So mm -mm, I don't like that. And lastly, burrito underscore bandy, bandio asked, will you sit on my face? No, I will not sit on your face. Like, what the hell kind of question is that? No. Um, oh, so let me show you a couple little cute things. I don't ever go to the mall anymore. I don't think I even went to the mall this entire year. I went on Sunday and I got these super cute shoes. Like I ordered them in black too. They're actually way cuter on because they kind of like make, look like my feet would be big this way. They're from BB. Um, they're size seven, but yeah, they look big this way, but not on. They're super, super cute. And then I ordered these online for Cyber Monday from Aldo. They're only $55. They have these suede thigh-high boots. And it's got like little lace on the back. Super, super cute. Yeah, but I haven't gone shopping, and I love shopping. I haven't gone all year because I get all my clothes online through Fashion Nova. So I have no need to even go to the mall, which saves a lot of time and money and stress from walking around and people bothering you. But yeah, I'm excited to see the reunion next week. I have a lot of work to do, so I will see you guys later. Oh, by the way, I'm almost done with my office. I bought a lot of stuff for it. So I promise you guys I will do a home tour as soon as my last room of the house, which is my office, is done. So I'm hoping to do that in the next two weeks after 
the last part of the reunion. So stay tuned for that too. But until next time, I love you guys and I will see you later. And here's this little whiny baby. Look at my little whiny baby. So